Happy Wednesday, everyone. It's time for the weekly carry live demos today. Oh. And while I wait for people to get on, we're going to play a little game while we wrap today because it is 85 degrees in my house right now. And uh, someone requested I use the new traveling wrap. So, hi. So, we're going to play the game of how many layers of wrap that's super heavy can Laura put on before she spontaneously combusts. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. So, our weekly front carry this week is front wrap cross carry with spread passes. So, this is a base size carry. Um, it's a great one to move on from after you get the basic front wrap cross carry down. And um, it's also nice and supportive for bigger kids if you have a heavier wrappy. Um, and it's And it's nice in the winter when you need those extra layers to help you stay warm. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that you can do the spread passes. So I will try and remember to show you multiple different ways to do it. Okay, so I've got a super long, long, probably over base plus one here that, I've, um, that I'm helping someone break in. So I'm gonna use this one. Um, and if I sweat too much, then when I switch to the back carry, I'm gonna use my thinner base because it's really, really hot today. All right, we're gonna start with our middle marker in the middle of your chest, just like you would for um, every other front wrap cross carry. I like to hold it in my teeth while I flip the tail so it doesn't slide to the side and get all weird. Okay, so once you've got your tails up over your shoulders, making sure they're not twisted, you need to size your pocket. Um, this is a really important step that a lot of people forget to do, and it makes this carry so much easier. So the pocket needs to be as close to the same size as your baby as possible, so you have the minimum amount of fussing that you need to do to tighten everything and tie off, especially if you have a more impatient baby. So for a newborn sized baby, the bottom rail is gonna be somewhere around your belly button-ish, maybe a little bit above there, depending on how long your torso is and how um, tall your newborn is. And then the top rail, you never ever wanna be above your armpits, so and I don't even like it close to my armpits, personally. But if you try and pull this up higher than your armpit and tuck a baby in there, you can tighten it all you want, but you're gonna have this U-shaped bit of slack that as soon as baby moves their head, is just gonna get pushed down to the level of your armpits. So don't try and wrap the baby any higher than top rail, even with your armpits. And also you're gonna want the top rail to be a little bit looser than the bottom rail, um, just so you have room to maneuver the baby into the wrap. All right, where is my newborn? Okay, so to insert baby, we're going to reach through the pocket and pull baby's legs down gently through and bring the top rail depending on their age and developmental milestones, all the way up to the base of their ears, or just at least up to their armpits. Now see, that rail is going up above my armpits, so I need to move this entire thing down until that top rail is making a straight line from armpit to armpit 
So when I tighten, I'm not pulling things up into my armpits or anything, and I'm not pulling the top rail down lower on baby than it needs to be. So then we're going to take the bottom rail and bring it up while lifting baby's knees into place on either side. So as you push the wrap up, you're trying to make it form a straight line from knee to knee. This baby doesn't have knees, so it's a little bit hard to show. But you're not just like shoving fabric up between there, because then nothing is holding baby's body in the ergonomic position that you want it to be in. So lift the knees and push the wrap into a straight line. And then you can start strand by strand tightening. So I've said this 100,000 times and I'm gonna say it in every single front wrap cross carry tutorial that I ever record. When you tighten, you can't tighten more than around one corner. Baby forms a corner. My side forms a corner and my shoulder forms a corner. So if I pull like this to tighten the top rail, the only thing that's moving is the fabric between my armpit and the top of my shoulder, nothing else. So if I wanna move this fabric right here, I have to lift this back and undo that corner that my shoulder is making. It's gotta go behind my back and outside the curve of my body. So now, as you see me pull, that fabric right here has now moved around and across my back. Again, lift it back away from your shoulder so you only have one corner. And pull out to the side. If you pull up, it's gonna go straight into your armpit and that's super uncomfortable. Then you, because while you're doing this, if you're not using a doll, you're keeping a hand on your baby, you bring this, you lay it on your shoulder where you want it to be, not too close to your neck, and then you bring it down and you hand it to yourself, to the hand that's across baby's back. Now you have a free hand and we've formed a corner here, but we don't have to work with that corner. If, again, if I pull here, I'm just moving this fabric this back here. That's not helpful to me. I need to move this slack right here. So I'm gonna reach back behind my shoulder and pull to the side again. You can see and feel the fabric moving across your back. If you don't see it and feel it move, you're not pulling in the right spot. Move your hand and try again. Then you walk it down to your hand. And then you take the next strand. Again, reach back, pull out and to the side. You should feel the fabric down here, moving back across your back. And then you walk it down to the hand that is supporting baby. This tail is tightened, we're good. My seat is secured on this side, all the slack, whoops, except right there. So I'm gonna go back. All the slack is moved around. So now I can switch hands. Now that the wrap is supporting baby more. And I can hold the wrap with this hand and tighten with this hand. So again, if I pull here, what fabric am I moving? This fabric, right here. I don't wanna move that, I wanna move all of this stuff right here next to baby. If I pull here, that doesn't go anywhere. That's not helpful. So I'm gonna take my rail, I'm gonna lift it all the way back off of my shoulder so it pulls back behind the line of my shoulder. I'm gonna pull it out to the side and you can see it move. And then I'm gonna hold it with my hand down here if you pin this in your knees, you undo all of your work because your knees do not have different digits to maintain tension on the different parts of the wrap. Don't pin it in your knees after you've strand by strand tightened it. So hold the wrap here. Again, I need to move slack here. So I'm not gonna pull here. I'm gonna pull all the way back across my back behind my shoulder blade and you can see the fabric move over here. and then use my fingers to walk it down and pass it to myself. I've been turning in circles, so I've tied these tails in a big knot. <laughs> okay, again, reach back behind. You can see it move down here. Pull it out into the side and then walk everything down to yourself. So now 
of that even tightening all throughout the width here. Got a little top row slack there. So I'm gonna reach back and move it out. But again, this side nice and evenly tightened there. Now this side nice and evenly tightened all the way through the width. You wanna tighten evenly all through the width of the wrap. If you tighten just the top rail and the bottom rail, baby's gonna sink and slouch down and that could compromise their airway. So you want everything to be nice and smooth and even all the way through. The other thing that happens if you don't tighten evenly all the way through the width is that certain things take more weight and they start to dig. So if you don't tighten the top, but you tighten the bottom, you get a bottom rail that pinches knees and digs in and is uncomfortable. So you don't want that. Now, if you have a baby that doesn't require a hand on them at all times, um, and you can let go like this, you can do a V-pull. If you have a baby that likes to lean and nosedive or backflip or you know flop around, you can skip this step for the moment until your rapee is more compliant, if that ever happens. To do the whole wrap tightening, again, we're gonna take our tails and we're gonna lift them straight up and off behind your shoulders. Because otherwise, if you pull here, nothing's moving. You've created a corner there. So pull here and gently bounce and V-pull there. All right, now this is where things get interesting. If you do your spread cross passes right now, you have to pin one of your tails somewhere and that undoes all of your tightening and basically you're doing the whole carry over again. So don't spread your cross passes yet. Wait. Create your regular cross passes over and under just like you would for a regular front wrap cross carry with bunched passes and then tie a half knot. Now I have two hands free to maintain tension while I spread cross passes. And I don't have to let go of a nicely strand by strand tightened tail. This is an easier way to spread your cross passes. So there's two ways you can do it. You can take the tail as it is and spread it out across baby's back while walking the slack down under their leg like this and then tighten through your knot. You can even strand by strand tighten through your knot. So this is one way to spread the cross pass. I really don't like doing it this way. One, because it's now all the way up in my neck. <coughs> I feel like I'm choking. Sorry, I have a horrible gag reflex, so anything that makes me feel like I'm choking makes me wanna die. Um, also, it's right over baby's face. It's really not comfortable. So this is not my favorite way to spread a cross pass. <clears throat> what I prefer to do is actually take the bottom rail and flip it ooh, under the top rail here. And cap the shoulder just a little bit. And then spread it across. This way, I still get that nice spread cross pass, but no, I am not. You can turn on your movie if you want to. Now, the wrap is not in baby's face and it's not up on the side of my neck. It's still on top of my shoulder, but it's not way up in my neck like it was before. Do you need help? It's probably in the player. Okay, so same thing on this side. We're gonna take the old bottom rail and shove it underneath the top rail. Pull this shoulder down a little bit. And then spread our cross pass. And walk all that slack down to the half knot. And then 
tighten it. The other thing you can do is if you reach down next to baby's knee, you can take this rail and pull it up between you on both sides to hammock it. And then spread your back passes down to distribute the weight across your back a little bit more. And then finish your knot in the back. And now you have, if you have an actual baby that has a rear end and joints, you have three spread passes with no passes stuffed in baby's face and nothing going up across your neck um, or blocking baby's airway potentially. So this is nice. It's real supportive, more so than the regular front wrap cross carry. Uh, and it's warm if you need warm. I don't need warm right now, I'm sweating. <laughs> but in the winter, it's great. And it's snuggly. All right, if you have any questions or you're watching this as a replay, feel free to drop comments and I will answer them after I'm finished with both videos. All right, I'm gonna take this baby off and I'm gonna switch to the other wrap. This one is way too hot for a multi-layer carry right now. And we'll do um, the weekly back carry here in just a minute as soon as I get untangled from here and start the new video.